He had all he ever wanted, and he still wanted more. We had plenty of money, we had the right home, the right cars. I was very skilled at lying, and it was not a very large step for me to cross when it came to infidelity. How he lost it all and gained it all back on today's 700 Club Interactive. On 700 Club Interactive, we use technology to pray for each other and explore topics that matter to you. Watch what God is doing in the world today. Well, welcome to the show. Marriage can be tough. From balancing the checkbook to raising children, conflict will come. And it, become, and it can become a fight just to stay together. Brad Mathias knows this feeling. He had the house, money, and family, but it wasn't enough. And when conflict came to his household, he decided it was time to leave. I'm laying in this uh, very, very dingy beater type hotel, and I get a call, middle of the night, and it's Paige. And she has just been told of my infidelity. And it, it is the, the moment that I had both feared and longed for. Everyone dreams of getting married. And so as a young man, after meeting Paige and then the courtship and really giving it everything I had to win her heart, it was the moment of sort of finality for me to walk into the church and actually marry her. I continued to do the adapting that I had learned to do as a child in church, which allowed me to be one person with my wife and someone else with my friends from school or my drinking buddies. At about year seven of our marriage, the wheels kind of came off of this sort of fairy tale life that we'd been living where I was successful, we had plenty of money, we had the right home, the right cars. And yet inside of our lives, we were very distant to each other. I was very skilled at lying. And it was not a very large step for me to cross when it came to infidelity. I remember getting the call as a, in the middle of the night from a, uh, a headhunter in Chicago who was looking for an interim CEO for a dot-com in Wisconsin. And I remember thinking this was my ticket to get out of the marriage. I would live in Wisconsin during the week and then every other weekend I would come home. And we lived that way for several months. And it was in an environment where I, ironically the affair had been over for some time that she found out about it. And, uh, and that's when the marriage blew wide apart. All of my secrets had been discovered and I didn't have to pretend to anyone anymore. I was served with papers and the process of divorce began and I really embraced not only a new Brad, but also a new belief system about life, about God, and about the nature of things. I was required to travel significantly and began to fly um, several times a month and developed a pretty nasty earache and my eardrum ruptured in a landing and a significant bacterial infection threatened my health. And I found myself in a hospital and dealing with the risk of a brain abscess. I remember laying completely still, quiet, by myself, alone in this hospital and wondering if I might die. I have great success financially, professionally, owned all the right things, drove the right cars, and I wasn't happy. And the things I had done were supposed to make me happy. And I remember laying there quietly and, and very cognitively knowing that I might die and I wanted to know if if I died, what would I meet? What would I face? Where would I go? And I said a simple prayer in my, in my thought, and it was sincere, and it was deep, and it was true of my heart. And the prayer was this, if there's a God, I would really, truly like to know who you are. Something supernatural happened to me. I felt like I was either having a vision or an out-of-body experience. I found myself in a place of great darkness, a place completely isolated from the rest of the world, a place that felt without hope. And I had the awareness as I was in this darkness that this is where I'm headed, and it scared me. And in that moment, I also saw Jesus, and I had this feeling of great peace, of hope, and a sense that I had a choice to make. I could continue to live my life for Brad 
or I could admit and submit to God as Jesus. And I chose for Jesus. I remember getting out of the bed, putting on my street clothes, and literally that moment driving from Wisconsin to, to Memphis, Tennessee, where my wife had relocated with our kids. No matter what my wife did or didn't do in response to my action, I had to show my Savior, Jesus, that I would do whatever he asked of me. And he was asking me to make things right with my family, to say to her, this was on me. I made these choices and I hurt you and it was wrong and I need you to forgive me because something's different inside of me. And as I drove, I cried, I wept, tear after tear after tear. I wept more in that one drive than I had in my entire life. My wife had been a Christian and had prayed for me to find Christ. She quit praying for God to save our marriage and she began to pray just for God to save my soul. And it was in those exact moments that she prayed those prayers that God showed up for me. The priorities changed in my prayer life. I had gotten things maybe um, sideways in trying to pray for my marriage to be restored, but that wasn't that wasn't going to happen if Brad's heart wasn't softened for God to really show up in his life and to be real for him for the very first time in his life. And now I have a marriage that I've always hoped for. And I have a relationship and an intimacy with my wife that I would have never dreamed possible. Brad is my greatest testimony to the verse of God speaking that we are a new creation in Christ. Jesus is the real deal and he is all about redeeming our messes. And he can redeem your mess. He can even take your mistakes, terrible mistakes, and shape them all together for good. Why? Because he loves us. He doesn't want us to destroy ourselves. He wants us to be with him for all eternity. He wants us to have life and life more abundantly. So often we, th we think that the rules are there to keep us away from good things. No, they're not. They're, they're there to keep us from very bad things. Trails of destruction, with, at the end of it, there's only death, there's only destruction of everything that we love, everything that we hold dear. If you need prayer, if you need a turnaround, if you're looking for, is there a way out is there a way that God can take anything that is in my life and work it together for good? We're here for you. And we're not here to condemn you. We're not here to judge you. We're here to tell you that God loves you. And he can take any situation and turn it around. All it takes on our part is surrender and not a partial surrender not just a little bit, not a bargain with God. If you do this for me, then I'll do that. No, none of that. A complete surrender. God, here's my life. Take it. Use it. Use it for your glory. And he'll do the same thing for you that he's done for others. All you have to do is ask. So if you want someone to pray with you and ask that, God, take me. Will you have me? Will you change my life? Call us, 888-777-1999. We're here for you, and we're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is make that call. Well, coming up, newlyweds who fought over money. Hear how they found peace right after this. A bully thrown out of school. I like the fear that I could put in someone's heart. They would have to call the police to the school, and then that's when I said, Marcus, you're out of here. How faith saved him from the streets on today's 700 Club Interactive. I was having some pains between my shoulder blades. At that point, everything changed. Diagnosis, pancreatic cancer. First there was prayer, the second is to fight. As soon as we walked through those doors at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, all my anxiety left. 
The pastoral care here is based on the Bible, based on the Word of God, just as it is at our own church. When you combine the great medicine with the spiritual resources we have, it provides the patients with something that really can make a difference. You got a pastor right there on staff praying with patients, and whether it be scripture or whether it just be a word of encouragement to say God's got this. If you or someone you love is fighting complex or advanced stage cancer, go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. You'll learn how our treatment results compare to national averages and see a list of insurance plans with which we've worked. Advanced medicine and technology, the warm embrace of the spirit. I firmly believe God led me here. Call or go to cancercenter.com. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Appointments available now. Start planning your journey to the Holy Land. Come to Jerusalem. Breathe the air Jesus breathed that very night in the Garden of Gethsemane. Walk in his footsteps to Golgotha. Step inside the tomb. See the stone where his body lay. Glory to God, he is risen. Ask your pastor or visit GoIsrael.com to learn more about making the journey that will transform your faith in God and his word. Experience Israel. You'll never be the same. As a single mom, Yvette Weber had learned how to get by on a small income. Then she got remarried. And when she and her husband found themselves in debt, she knew exactly how to get out. The stress of raising two children alone weighed heavily on Yvette Weber. As a single mom, our, our budget was rent, utility bills, <laughs> and food. But the kids were little, and they liked macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, so we ate a lot of that. During that time, Yvette watched The 700 Club and learned about the importance of tithing. So she decided to give God 10% of what little money she earned. There were times that, you know, we didn't know um, how we were going to make it. But there was always a knock on the door and there was always provision and God, we never went without. A few years later, Yvette met and married Tim. We had a dual income and for the first time we had more than we needed. We had a lot and we got a little carried away. We made high car payments, we had credit card debt, we just weren't making wise choices. Eventually, the couple ran up $18,000 in credit card debt. We were both feeling so much stress over the finances that it started to affect us in terms of how we were getting along. We were fighting a little bit more. Giving was another area the couple had conflict. While Yvette tithed off her teacher salary, Tim wasn't so sure. I wasn't quite ready to do that. I think I was just afraid. We didn't have enough. Uh, we had bills that seemed to be increasing. It was hard to think of giving 10%. When the couple watched Pat teach on the law of reciprocity, Tim had a change of heart. We were regular watchers of the 700 Club for a long time. And I know that that would prick me every time I would hear that. It would remind me, you know, we really should be doing that. What am I holding back when it doesn't belong to me, really? It's, it, he gave it to me for use for him. So under that direction, we decided that we needed to go back to tithing, not only my income, but his income as well. After they both started giving 10% of their paychecks to God, Tim landed a higher paying job. From my part, it was almost effortless, and I couldn't believe how God, how obvious it was to me that God had just opened the doors. And the Lord was able to give me wisdom to make what we had go further and, and never be late on a single bill. Soon, Yvette was able to cut her work hours in half and spend more time at home with the children. Now the CBN partners are on track to be debt-free this year. It takes a leap of faith to trust that you can give to the Lord first. You can give to His work and you can trust that He's gonna make everything work out okay. Go ahead and trust God. And I know in my own life many times that God has always come through in His promises and we just had to trust Him on this one. I love the Webbers and their honesty and how they finally got what God was trying to show them, that He wants to be first in our lives. He wants to be a priority with us. But He also uses us to speak into the needs of the lives of others. And so when we give a portion, just a portion of our income <clears throat> to what God is calling us to do, then both of those things occur. He sees our trust in Him. He provides for us. He can trust us with more. 
and we reach out and touch the needs and the lives of others. We want to enjoy, invite you to or join the 700 Club. There are so many of us right now that are a part of the 700 Club and at work around the world, reaching the needs of others, and we do it by doing what God asked us to do, giving a portion of our income back to Him. So if you'd like to be a part of the 700 Club about meeting the needs of people, teaching them about God, about His ways, but also providing work opportunities, providing clothing, clean water, medical help in positions of need that people have medically speaking, and also for orphans around the world, we ask you to join with us. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and it'll mean that you are touching the world with the love of Christ. So call now. Our number's toll-free. It's 1-888-777-1999. Or you can join by logging on to CBN.com. Gordon? Well, up next, she read his mail online and busted her cheating husband. I went to bed that night kind of with a pit in my stomach, knowing something was up. What do you do at that point? I mean, I just spilled and told her and... And she left. Why she came home after this. A cold case detective with no use for God. The idea of a life after this one was meaningless to me. Until he picks up a Bible. I want to see what Jesus has to say. If he's got some wisdom to share, let's hear it. And tracks down the truth. This was intriguing to me because it was a claim not just about some wisdom from the ancient past, but a claim about an event that either occurred or didn't occur. And that was something I could test. On the 700 Club. So I'm only a Christian today because it's true. If you're the mother of a child with behavior problems, I'd like to talk to you. My name is Janet Lehman, and I'm a behavioral therapist and a mom. I know what it's like when the child that you love becomes a defiant, out-of-control child who disrespects you. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the program that tens of thousands of moms are now using to turn around their child's behavior. If you've heard about the Total Transformation and wondered if it will work for you, now you can try it for free. I'm willing to give away a thousand programs today for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. I know the total transformation works because I used these techniques with my own son and with troubled kids for over 30 years. Let me prove to you that it works by giving you the program free. Call the number on your screen now to get the total transformation free. Son of God, the major motion picture soundtrack. Pray to him and he will listen. Movie in theaters February 28th. Soundtrack available now. Tim and Stephanie seem to be the perfect couple. Everyone thought so, especially Stephanie. But she was clueless about Tim's other life until the day she read his mail online. It's one of those things that, that for me, it just consumed me. And it, but it gave me that odd feeling of um, pursuit. It was also something Tim kept secret, his addiction to pornography. It was filling a void, right or wrong. It was filling something that I needed filled. It began with teenage curiosity and a magazine. But the images sparked a desire in Tim to see more. By the time he reached adulthood, a boy's fascination had grown into an addiction fueled by the internet. It started uh, slowly. And it was a short period of time, and I was fully addicted. Yet no one ever suspected Tim had a problem. After all, he was a Christian who was active in his church. Even when he married, his wife Stephanie had no idea he was hiding something. I knew we had some issues, but I didn't think they were horrific by any means. I thought, yeah, I thought we had a pretty healthy marriage. Tim also traveled for work and as a member of a vocal group. The travel allowed him to indulge in his addiction, but also opened the door to something else he craved, the attention of women. So, so Tim pursued just, uh, one affair after another. Later there'd be disappointment, be frustrated with myself, angry with myself, but no, I shouldn't be in this place because I know if I'm here, I'm gonna go down this road, and I would. Eventually, Tim and Stephanie had children, but still nothing changed. Tim knew what he was doing was wrong, but the addiction had taken over. 
That was so gone, I just... When the devil has that kind of grip on you, you don't realize it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're just numb, and I was numb. One day, Tim was confronted with the truth when a friend at work talked to him about something he had read in the Bible. Tim's guilt became overwhelming. I think it was just where I was at that day. Oh, I just totally lost it. And I left and I, I remember praying and just saying, God, I'm done. I'm done, do what you want. And he took it away. My, the addiction was gone. The, the desire for affairs was gone. And that to me was probably the most impactful moment in my life because it was so real. And, and that's when my faith became real. But Tim still had struggles and continued chatting online with women. Even so, he worked on being a better husband and father. Stephanie noticed the change, but she didn't know why because Tim still hadn't confessed his secrets. One day it all came out when Stephanie came across a Facebook entry from her husband to a woman she didn't know. I was pretty crushed, I was devastated because that kind of conversation should not have taken place between somebody else and my husband. That's totally crossing the line. The way she reacted to that was absolute disgust for me. And, and she didn't know the rest of the story. And so I went to bed that night kind of with a pit in my stomach, knowing something was up. And she knew, she knew, so she knew something was up. It's still hard to talk about. Um, so I just spilled. What do you do at that point? I mean, I just spilled and told her and, and she left got the keys and I immediately drove to church and I sat at church and just cried out for help and just... Um... The only hope I had is that I knew my wife and I knew she loved me. Now Stephanie knew. And I remember standing in the kitchen and Tim saying, I'll respect whatever your decision is. And I said, well, I can't have you leave, you need to stay here for the kids. And then later that night, our pastor shared with me, you need to grieve for your marriage. You need to grieve what was and what you had. And you need to grieve the fact that your marriage will never be the same ever again. But also, um, he just said the simple words of forgive as you have been forgiven. And I remember telling him, I don't know if I can ever forgive him for this. The couple stayed apart for 10 days. During that time, Stephanie came to a realization that, at the time, was very hard to accept. And in order for me to heal, I have to forgive him. That doesn't mean I don't have to forget. That doesn't mean that the pain is gone. But I can start to heal now that I've given him that, and then together we can heal together. The path to forgiveness and rebuilding trust would take time. He had to gain it back, you know, and so it was just by him being open and honest, by saying, here's all my passwords, check my email, check my Facebook, check this. Once we were able to do that, then it was like the, the path to recovery for us was rapid. Mm -hmm. She accepted where I was. She accepted that it wasn't an issue for me anymore, but I needed accountability. You know, by him being honest with me, it made it a lot easier for me to start to trust him. Healing and forgiveness come through God. Without God, I don't know how, I, I don't think we would be sitting here today. I know we wouldn't be sitting mm -hmm. here today. We were taught that Christ had to be the center of the house. And I think that's backwards. I think Christ needs to be center of your life. And if he's the center of your life and the center of your wife's life, he will by default become the center of your house. Well, that's a word of wisdom for all of us, no matter what our scenario. I don't know what it is you're facing today, but if you're feeling just swamped and overwhelmed by circumstances and you're saying, God, I want you to be the center of this scenario, it has to start with you, you know? You can't ask him to be the center of your, ho your home, the center of your workplace, the center of your life generically. It starts with you, with your heart, with your will, 
with your mind, with your spirit, saying to him, I surrender. I mean, that's, why, that's what we sing about when we sing that old hymn, I surrender all, all, every bit of it. Not hanging on, no longer going through pretense, just going to church, putting the face on, doing all the, the stuff. It's a lay down and die. That's what the invitation is. So that the life of Christ can come into the very core of your being and resurrect you into something beyond your imagining, something new, something whole. I mean, you could see in Tim's life that once the truth came out, once he knew that his wife forgave him and that she cared about him, it's like he was free to walk in what God had prepared for him from the beginning. He was his own worst enemy. He had allowed things to come into his life and had nurtured them and harbored them there and allowed it to go on until suddenly he wasn't in control anymore. It was controlling him. But when he surrendered, when he laid it all down, he had what God offers to each and every one of us, a fresh beginning, a new start, a do-over. Only God, only God. And God would have done that for Tim whether Stephanie had stayed or not because it's not about the other person and how they respond or react to, it, to you. It's about what you do in your heart with the living God. So today, do business with God. He's saying to you, let me in, let me come into your circumstances. But you have to let go of your opinion, of your desire, of your need, and say, God, above it all, I want you. He's available to you today if you'll do that. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. It's a relationship. Jesus, I'm here. I'm done. I'm, I'm lost, holy. I'm asking you to come in to forgive me, to become my Savior, the Lord of my life. Teach me your ways. Change me. I want it all. Ask him right now. Gordon? All right. We're going to pray for marriages. We're going to pray for families, and we've got your prayer request. Rose says, please pray for my husband, Joel, to get saved. He gets distracted by the world, and I've been praying for him to fall in love with Jesus. And then Jen writes in, saying, please pray for peace in my family. My kids are so jealous of each other, and there is always conflict. I would like to leave them all and never look back. Jen, don't do that. Just begin to love them. Uh, jealousy comes out of conflict, but love casts all of that out. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray for families. We're going to pray for you. Uh, families are, are in a battle in today's world. There's so many different distractions uh, with adultery just a, a click away uh, and, and so many things to take our eyes off of Jesus, off of each other, uh, and so many different distractions, whether it's all this technology we surrounded ourselves with or just the busyness of trying to work, earn a living, the busy, busyness of life. Let's put all of that aside right now, and let's seek God. He is the answer to every human need. He's the answer for every family. He's the answer for you. And when you find him, then you find the peace that passes all understanding. And no matter what the circumstances are, you can have that peace because you know that he's with you. So join with us. Terry and I are going to pray. Let's join together and let's create a great circle of prayer. And let's pray for one another. Join us. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just lift up families to you. And for, for Jen and for Rose, we ask for their families that there would be peace and your love. And your love drives out all conflict when people are aware of their relationship with you. The infinite riches that are available to each one of us, then all jealousy, all conflict, all strife, all anger, all bitterness, it all just falls away. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, encourage us today. Be with us today. And I ask for your ministering angels to surround these homes, to surround these marriages, to surround these children, and let your peace be upon them. Cause your face to shine on them and give them your peace. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
We leave you this word from Psalm. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. God bless you. We'll see you again.